Good morning and welcome to Emmanuel United Church Worship Service. I hope that you've had um, an enjoyable July off and, and um, were able to enjoy the weather in spite of COVID. Hopefully that soon that we'll be back together in the worship center of Emmanuel United Church where we can worship face to face once again. And I hope that will be soon. But for now, we will continue to do the video uh, worship time together. So again, welcome. And I'm glad that you're able to join me and the many others to worship together in the name of Jesus Christ today. Let us acknowledge the land that we are worshiping upon wherever you may be. We come respectfully acknowledging that we live and worship on Treaty 20 lands. This treaty was made with a number of First Nations communities called the Michi Sagigi. Treaty 20 is part of the Williams Treaty. These lands that we inhabit and worship upon are the ancestral lands of First Nations communities of Alderville, Curve Lake, Hiawatha, Grizzle, Rama, Georgina, and Scugog Island. Our relationship with First Nations peoples have been impaired by our desire for ownership of these lands and its resources. These lands were once a place where many First Nations people raised their families upon, drew their livelihood from, and were stewards of the land and waterways entrusted to them by their ancestors. Over the decades, as settlers to this land, past and current generations have dishonored the treaties that were made with the indigenous peoples of Turtle Island and of these lands that we now occupy. With the revealing of Canada's history through the work of the Truth and Reconciliation Commission, it has exposed how we have treated our allies. We now seek out pathways for reconciliation, for right relations with all First Nation, Inuit and Métis peoples in Canada, restoring to health and to wholeness our broken relationships and developing lasting harmony and peace between one another. Good morning. Welcome to Emmanuel United Church in Peterborough's Sunday morning service on YouTube. We'll start with our announcements this morning. Next Wednesday, the UCW will be having a social time at the um, West Mance, and it will be from 1.30 to 3.30, and please let Ann Smith know that you are coming. I'm going to light the Christ candle, knowing that in Christ, nothing can remain in darkness. Christ's light shines brightly on the path to justice, peace, and love. I will now light the earth candle to remind us that we are part of God's creation and that we are to be stewards of our earth. And I now write, light the rainbow candle because we are an affirming, welcoming congregation that we welcome all within our midst.
invite you to join me in the call to worship that uh, you'll find scrolled on your screen, if not in your service bulletin that you have printed off for yourself. Creator, we come celebrating the infinite power and love that has gathered us into community. We gather in God's presence and faith, trusting in the Creator's way of loving others. We journey together in hope, knowing that God's promises are trustworthy and full of life as revealed through Christ, and that God's kingdom is for all. Let us celebrate in the name of the Risen One, who has come to make faith real for all. And now let us sing together the first hymn from Voices United 412, This is the Day. Join our verse, voices in the, in the opening prayer and the Lord's Prayer. Eternal mystery of the unfolding universe, awaken us to your Spirit's power and your ever-presence in our world, pulling us back from the chaos in our lives. Enable us to hear clearly Jesus' voice through your word, offering us the strength and assurance we need. We come to worship and in trust seeking your touch on the choices we will make in our daily living. We come together praying, Creator of heaven, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thy is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Our scripture for this morning is Ephesians 4, 24 to 5, verse 2. And I'm reading this morning from The Message. But that's no life for you. You learned Christ. My assumption is that you have paid careful attention to him, being well instructed in truth 
in the truth precisely as we have in Jesus. Since then, we do not have an excuse for ignorance. Everything, and I do mean everything, connected with that old way of life has to go. It's rotten through and through. Get rid of it, and then take on an entirely new way of life. A God-fashioned life. A life renewed from the inside and working itself into your contact conduct as God accurately reproduces his char character in you. What this adds up to then, this is no more lies, no more pretense. Tell your neighbor the truth. In Christ's body, we are all connected to each other. After all, when you lie to others, you end up lying to yourself. Go ahead and be angry. Do well to be angry, but don't use your anger as fuel for revenge. And don't stay angry. Don't go to bed angry. Don't give the devil that kind of foothold in your life. Did you use to make ends meet by stealing? Well, no more. Get an honest job so that you can help others who can't work. Watch the way you talk. Let nothing foul or dirty come out of your mouth. Say only what helps, each word a gift. Don't grieve God. Don't break his heart. His Holy Spirit, moving and breathing in you, is the most intimate part of your life, making it you fit for himself. Don't take such a gift for granted. Make a clean break with all cutting, backbiting, profane talk. Be gentle with another, sensitive, forgive one another as quickly and as thoroughly as God in Christ forgave you. And verse five, or chapter five, verse one to two, watch what God does and then you do it like children who learn proper behavior from their parents. Mostly what God does is love you. Keep company with him and learn of a life of love. Observe how Christ moved us. His love was not cautious, but extravagant. He didn't love in order to get something from us but to give everything of himself, love like that. Our response to the scripture, for the word of God in scripture, for the word of God among us, for the word of God within us. We give praise for the presence of God through the word. We will now have him 661 from Voices United come to my heart.
One of my summer jobs was working at a truck tire service center in Pembroke while I did part-time ministry on a two-point charge. What I liked about this job was that I lived with a family and worked in the family's tire shop. Bud, the owner of the truck service center, he and I would head out north every couple of weeks to deliver new retreads and tires and pick up the used tire casings to retread them. It was a full day of deliveries and pickups. What I liked most about this day, long trip, was that somewhere outside Algonquin Park, there was a little bakery. It was part of a privately owned flour mill. I ground wheat and other seeds into flowers for the local businesses or, or individuals. The bakery shop was rustic. Wooden floors and countertops. And all the good bake, bakes, all the baked goods lay underneath a cloth. The aroma was just heavenly. Fresh bread, pies, desserts, you get the idea. The warmth caused by the ovens and the blending of all of these smells was incredible. That it created a home kitchen comfort feeling. But what was so unusual about this place was that the baker loved to experiment, I discovered. His experiments would be off to the side, each creation a variation upon a prototype. The test pieces were not the usual Costco a quarter inch or half inch square, but a good couple of inches. So the tester got a really good taste of what was being presented. On one particular trip, it was lemon pastries. Six lemon pastry tarts. One of them was just awful to my taste buds. The other ones were somewhat better. After sampling them, we were asked to rate them which we did. But the baker's attempt was to reduce, eliminate, or add certain ingredients without compromising the pastry or the taste of the tart or whatever the, the dessert was. On that day, I think it would have been convenient for the bakery owner to stick to what people truly liked. But he was trying to expand his dessert repertoire into new territory. After the taste test, we purchased what we came for, two dozens of their famous freshly baked cinnamon rolls. There were a few times where these heavenly delights never made it back home to the rest of Bud's family to enjoy. When I look at, at this writing by Paul to the Ephesians church community, he outlines in graphic detail some pretty important aspects or characteristics of faith and relationship building that were weak or absent in the community, pointing to how faith could be lived out. The letter to the Ephesians community was both to the Jewish and Gentile peoples. The community, through the experience of Paul's preaching, has formed this faith community because they wanted to experience the God that Paul spoke about through Christ's life of compassion and love that seemed to lay dormant below the surface of their daily living experience. Paul made these ingredients of relationship building real for them through Christ. But Paul was instructing them once again through his letter to get rid of these bad influences, these bad ingredients and characteristics that prevented them not only from experiencing the qualities of Christ, but to incorporate them into their own daily living. Time passed, and from this letter it appears that it was more convenient to hold on to old life practices than to be challenged by these new ingredients that at first were unfamiliar and felt different to them. 
Paul outlines for the Ephesian community and for us today, the ingredients for reconciliation. Scholars such as Pick and Bonrad surmises that the way of the world was very much a tooth for a tooth and an eye for an eye, an angry behavior of yelling and name calling was very much part of the behavior, and it appears it still was. Like the baker who was experimenting with the ingredients in the tart mix, the right proportions had not been reached yet without overpowering the tart with too much sugar or lemon or lard or whatever. Here was a new community trying to figure out how to live with these new characteristics of behavior in their daily overall life at home and in community. And it was challenging. Unfortunately, they were falling backwards in what they knew would give them real hope and real relationships. They were falling back into what was convenient, comfortable, and easy in their responses to such situations in the community and in their faith, church community. Where was the balance? What needed to be changed for reconciliation to transpire in this new community of faith. Some had given up. Maybe they thought this new way would be easy. Struggling with this new way, it was easier to slide back into familiar ways because it was comfortable and less exhausting. I wonder at times about us if our faith is about convenience holding the premise of an outward faith while internally not acting on the characteristics of what we are called to live out. Paul's outline of not speaking about others behind their backs, not taking advantage of another for gain or sinning, holding a grudge, stealing, being bitter, letting the wrath of one's anger get the best of them, or being malicious towards another was quite the challenge for many of them as it is for us today in our relationships with others. Like the Ephesians people of the New Way, it is challenging and messy to live out these ingredients of reconciliation. And like some of the Ephesian followers of Christ, our behavior too is often to take the convenient way in many of the situations that we face in our own relationships. You see, we all love convenience, do we not? Thank God for bakers and other food industries that mass produce food to offer us the same taste and texture and smell time and time again. We rely on the Bun Masters and Tim Hortons and McDonald's of our, of our societies and other food outlets because they can offer us the same taste and texture and smell wherever we purchase their food. It's comfortable, it's convenient, and it does not keep us from wondering what it will taste like. But following Jesus does not conjure up convenience. Like I said, it is not like slipping into something comfortable. It's about taking risks and curbing one's reaction that causes one to get angry with another, or resisting the temptation in doing something harmful, like gossiping or maligning someone, or replacing it with one's convenient reaction when one becomes angry or hurt by someone. One may be clear in what they believe, yet in spite of this, we have the tendency to disregard the ingredients of faith and go to what is convenient for us in our behavior. Paul is reminding the people of this community what he believed have been dropped from the recipe of being a follower of Christ. In this passage, as mentioned, Paul is trying to lead them to understand the importance of reconciliation 
reconciliation that will bring about better relationships between them and others, and between them and the Spirit of God. What are we witnessing through Paul's words is that following Christ is messy, unpredictable, and to say the least, challenging. Having faith in Christ does not allow us to live in the sphere of what is convenient or comfortable, but pushes us on many different fronts to be faithful to the good news and to Christ. Not too long ago, I was making supper. It called for a certain amount of chili. It was the central ingredient. The dish was prepared. The dish I was preparing was cooking away on the stove. And when I discovered that I did not have chili, I could not shut everything down and make a run to the store. I was caught off guard and scrambled around to find something to substitute the chili with. The dish was definitely different. The lesson learned was check what's in the cupboards before starting to cook. The lesson that Paul is insisting on here is for us to check what's in our faith cupboards so that we do not use knockoff faith ingredients when we say love is the golden rule. We need to be sure that we actually have what it takes to make our actions real. Do we have the truth? Do we have honesty to back that up? To love one another as Christ loves us? Do you have the actions of patience and tenderness, compassion, to hear the individual and to respond to them in love? That's what Paul was suggesting. It requires more than just a kiss and a hug, but to journey with the individuals through those difficult places to bring about true healed relationship, a pathway for reconciliation. We need to ensure we are stocked by strength in these areas to make what Paul has outlined real for us and for others. We can do this with Christ's help and example. This is what the Truth and Reconciliation Commission process in Canada is all about. Finding our way forward in a broken relationship that is filled with pain and ill feelings that now is upheld by truth, honesty, and a willingness to listen to make the changes necessary for healing through compassion and understanding. In Christian terms, it is learning to put away slander and malice and anger, racism, to truly see each other as God intended us to see one another, as brothers and sisters, as the Creator's children, as Jesus referred to so many Samaritans as. One approach, one's approach to one another, as Paul expressed, is to be tender-hearted, kind, forgiving one another as Christ forgives us. For the followers of Christ of Paul's time, this was a new way, a way that individuals and their communities were not used to because it was created on the fittest will survive. For many of us, these are common actions that we choose to act or not act upon. In their commonness, they still lead us to a better place in our lives, building individuals and communities up as followers in Christ and in love. Our beliefs and faith journey is anything but convenient. Our faith in Christ is anything but common. Our faith has social and common ties to caring for others. But what makes faith unique that it is a spiritual force that demands social and personal change. Our strength comes from a greater place through Christ. This strength gives us the capacity to make systemic differences in our community and in the world when we hold on to the ingredients of building one another up in a healthy 
accepting, loving relationship in Christ's name. So I ask, is your faith out of convenience or are our actions pleasing to God? We come prepared to share our lives, and at this time we give thanks for all that you have offered to the ministry of Emmanuel United Church. We thank each and every one of you who does the quiet pastoral care by keeping in touch with each other and for the many who pray for all of us. Thank you to the pastoral care committee members for your ongoing efforts and to all volunteers who contribute to the functioning and well-being of Emmanuel United Church. Thank you to all of you who find ways to financially support this ministry, whether you give through pre-authorized remittance, banky transfers or by envelope dropped off or mailed to the church. We say thank you. It's important that we give generously to Christ's ministry. Let us hear how some of your gifts has helped to support and to care for others through the, through the Minute for Mission story. Our Minute for Mission. We know that spirit speaks through music and we are exploring new ways to listen. The meditative walk in the neighborhood around McKay United Church located in the national's capital, kicks off with a quote from the 13th century poet Rumi. There are many roads leading to God. I have chosen that music and dance. There is no live guide speaking the words or playing music streaming through the earphones. Instead, the church's minister, Peter Woods, also a jazz musician, uses sonic maps, a geolocated listening platform to facilitate the walk. Participants tune in by clicking a link or scanning a QR code, turning a corner from one zone in the neighborhood to the next. The music and message change. As the pandemic unfolded, we quickly, quickly realized that the concerts and other types of ways of sharing music and spirituality through jazz wasn't going to happen. We transitioned to our weekly kindness of jazz, music and meditation evenings online and embraced other technologies to minister to, pe to people safely, said Woods. In traumatized community of artists, these initiatives sparked new relationships. Guest co-hosts and musicians offered leadership from as far away as Ireland, South Korea, and San Salvador. I love how vital the connections have become amongst artists across tech platforms with spiritually resident friends. Music in this contact text is the soundtrack to sacred moments and relationships. I feel great joy to witness this work unfolding. Improvised music is so often in service of the sacred, but now more than ever, says Woods, sonic walks and online music collaborations are the tip of creating the creative iceberg. The last few years have been full, even song. The band Woods plays with released its albums from the bridge in, 2000, in 2090, 2019. The church hosted a bustling night market serving up local food and showcasing the work of artisans beneath a moody cover of lights and floating jazz. Most recently, Woods released a meditative video called Arise, My Love, featuring original music 
coupled with photographs taken from the United Church's General Secretary, Michael Blair. In many words, in many of Wood's most innovative projects have been supported through the United Church Foundations and Mission and Service, Embracing the Spirit Grants, administered by the EDGE Network. We know that the Spirit speaks through music, and we are exploring new ways to listen, says Woods, and in the chaos of this time, there have been many blessings and much creativity. The positive energy that is way forward, that is the way forward. We are learning and sharing that we learn with the rest of the church. By supporting learning, creativity, and innovation, your gifts help the whole church discern a path for the future. Thank you. Let us ask God's blessing upon these gifts. Creator of all places and people, we offer our gifts that they may be used in the upbuilding of your love between your people and creation. Bless them that through them we offer our ministries that they may reach the places where support and care is needed. In your name we pray. Amen. In this during this time of praying for others, I, yeah, there will be moments where you can pray for the community and for people who you carry in your hearts and for ourselves. Let us pray. Creator, over these past weeks, we realize how little the world listens to your spirit of truth, honesty, love, compassion, and care. We live in a world burdened by pandemic and terrorism, sexism, racism, a world that often lives in fear of scarcity and violence, a world that is marred by abuses of all kinds, addictions and abandonment, a world that is plagued with the results of climate change and the disruptions we have caused knowingly and unknowingly because of our privilege or thirst for more. Your message of setting the values of right relations have been hampered and our desire to follow you have been stalled. Let us continue to hear your call to reinvest our being in love, in walking with our brothers and sisters as you walk with us in love. Enable us to hear the pain of Mother Earth as fires destroy hectares of lands around the world, where drought continues to push creators, creation, and people off of their homeland, and greed amplifies the destruction of the rainforest, the earth's lungs to produce fresh air for all. Help us to take seriously your commitment to, to you and be a vessel of your presence in our communities and in the world. Your presence that brings healing and peace to those who are sick, mourning, to those who are lost and lonely and depressed, to those we now name in silence who need your comfort and care. We come with our disappointments and failures, how we have not lived up to our call to follow you. Our pain and our shattered lives, our sickness and troubled lives. Hear it all, gracious one, and let your healing presence be in the midst of all that we have prayed for. So hear our prayers.
In your name we pray these things. Amen. And now let us turn to our last hymn from Voices United, 675, Will Your Anchor Hold? Will your anchor hold in the storms of life When the clouds unfold their wings of strife When the strong tides lift and the cables strain Will your anchor drift or firm remain? We have an anchor that keeps the soul Steadfast and sure while the billows roll to the rock which cannot move, grounded firm and deep in the Savior's love. It will surely hold in the straits of fear when the breakers tell that the reef is near. Though the tempest rave and the wild winds blow, not an angry wave shall our bark or flow. We have an anchor that keeps the soul steadfast and sure while the billows roll, fastened to the rock which cannot move, grounded firm and deep in the Savior's love. It will surely hold in the floods of death When the water's cold, chill our latest breath On the rising tide, it can never fail While our hopes abide within the veil We have an anchor that keeps the soul Steadfast and sure while the billows roll Fastened to the rock which cannot move, grounded firm and deep in the Savior's love. When our eyes behold through the gathering night the city of gold, our harbor bright, we shall anchor fast by the heavenly shore with the storms all past forevermore. We have an anchor that keeps the soul steadfast and sure while the billows roll fastened to the rock which cannot move grounded firm and deep in the Savior's love. And as we go, let God's love, let us realize that God's love is very real and present, giving us numerous chances to share the Creator's love with all of creation. Let us feel God's presence supporting us as we live the way of Christ and empower one another with and through the power of the Holy Spirit. So let us go in peace. Amen. Oh.